You're listening to the Holistic Health Front podcast. Whether you've already taken steps towards a healthier life, or you're just starting to explore this path, this podcast aims to help all of us live longer and more energized lives. So we can all do the things we want and be the person we know we can be. We bring in functional health experts, parents, professionals, and everyday people who want to make positive changes in their lives. And we create powerful conversations about how to feel good and have fun, easy and understandable way so you can live the most fulfilling life possible enjoy today's discussion and let us hear your thoughts in our powerful people facebook group the information presented in this podcast is not meant to diagnose treat cure prevent or mitigate any disease if you have any questions about your health or the health of a loved one please consult your health care practitioner now let's begin Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Holistic Health Front podcast. We are so glad that you're joining us tonight. Super excited. We've decided that it might be a good idea if you guys got to know us and the coaches a little bit better. So we decided to come up with a series where we actually feature um, some of our coaches that are on our podcast. Coach Q has been with us a couple of times in the past, and uh, we're excited that she's with us tonight. But that's what we're going to do. So thanks for joining us again tonight on the Holistic Health Front podcast. My name is Stephanie Cook, and we've got Coach Q with us, and she's from the Oakland, California area. Hi, Coach. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Hi. Yeah, we're excited to be here. We've been, we've known each other for a while, probably over the past year, just as classmates and then as Mm -hmm. colleagues, you know, on our podcast, but we haven't really spent a lot of time getting to know each other and our background. So I'm super excited to actually learn about you, Kiyama, and, you know, where you're from and what you do. So my first question is, how did you get into health coaching? Like, where's your, I want to know your journey, like not just health coaching, but there's always something that intrigues us, you know, as we start our life path, a little bit about your background, you know, where you're from, where you grew up, and then kind of what led you to where we are today. Of course. So yes, once again, my name is Coach Q. So I went to the college for theater arts dance. So I always been active. Um, But my intentional health journey started 2017. I was well um, out of college at that time, living in Los Angeles, California. Um, At that time, I was a professional dancer, background dancing for like local artists, uh, production, dance production shows. I was also like in other arts, like I would uh, like take acting classes, other like fun things in Los Angeles. So much to do out there. Um, So that's what, what I was doing. But I was also like um, heavily into weight training. I had like started weight training in college in 2011. And that just like stuck with me um, to this day. So I was weight training, but my eating habits weren't like matching what I thought a person that's in the gym would be eating like. (laughs) Um, And that I, I believe that kind of caught up with me in a way. Um. So in 2017, I had like this little a health scare is what I usually say. Um, my fingertips started to go numb. So I was like, hmm, what's this? I kind of ignored it. Um, they were like a little chapped. And so I was like, maybe it was winter time. So like, maybe it's cold. Maybe I'm dehydrated. Let me drink some more water. Um, so I drank more water and um, they continued to be chapped. So chapped that they would bleed and it was like really hurt to touch. So I have like <laughs> band-aids on like three fingers on this side and two fingers on this side. But, you know, oh, wow. living my life. I was also yeah outside of um, like uh, auditioning for dance gigs, going to dance classes. I was also uh, working as a waitress. I was working at two different jobs, two different west- restaurants, because um, the tips were great. Um, I was paying yeah. my rent with just tips. <laughs> but, um, We've so, all yeah, done that. Was, <laughs> right. <laughs> that was happening. Um, but I ignored it. I was like, it'll just go away. I'll drink water. It didn't go away. The fingers started to get numb. And then my toes and my feet started to get numb. And I was just like, hmm, this is weird. Again, 
and I had like no real sound knowledge of of health really. Um, so I just went on about my life, continued to do what I did. I was like, maybe I started to think like maybe it's the way I'm I'm lifting my weights. Maybe I should like take a break, don't go to the gym as hard or something like that. I made up some craziness. Um, it persisted, and then um, my think my um lips and my mouth were getting them. So I was like, okay, this is scary. It's <laughs> like, I need to go to the doctor. So I went to the doctor. They couldn't tell me what was going on. Um, they didn't take any tests, which now that I think about it, it's like, they didn't run any type of tests. She just asked me like, have you done anything different? I was like, no, I'm just doing the same thing I've been doing for years. I was like, okay, well, go home. And if it gets worse, come back. I was just like, if it gets worse, I may not come back, you know? <laughs> so, but yeah, again, yeah. I was ignorant at the time. So I went went back home, continued to do what I was doing. Um, and it persisted. So I went back. I, I can't remember the time frame, but I went back again. And she was like, well, you know, um, black and brown people are usually deficient in vitamin D. Maybe you need a vitamin D um, uh, pill. Again, she didn't run any tests on me, no blood tests or anything. I was just like, okay. Um, again, looking back, every time I tell the story, it's like, I was so ignorant. I didn't act for tests. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I didn't. Um, <laughs> but, but you know what? I think, mm -hmm. I think if you, if our audience is listening, they can totally relate to that because mm -hmm. you don't, mm -hmm. you don't feel empowered. You know, you kind of feel like the doctor is the expert and you don't want to challenge <laughs> and you don't want to question. So Absolutely. I think so many people can relate to what you're saying right now. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. So, um, I took the vitamin D pill. I don't really know if it worked really, cause I was still kind of feeling the feeling not feeling technically um, the symptoms, but maybe like sometimes like my my feeling in my fingers would come back. Um, so that kind of ignited me into like, why am I, I like you said, I felt so unempowered. I felt helpless, like um, depending on someone outside of myself to tell me about myself. So I was mm -hmm. like, no, this is crazy. That's when I got into like this rabbit hole of holistic health and natural health and things I could take to naturally heal myself. Long story short, I got into that. I was able to get myself out of what I got myself into. Um, I believe it was a vitamin B12 deficiency and iron deficiency that got too far into the deficiency. Um, but again, wow. doctor didn't run any tests. Um, so I was able to remedy me back to health. Um, and that was awesome. I was like, wow, I did it. <laughs> like, yeah. No pills or anything, you know, pills are, you know, needed at some times, but I just thought it was amazing that I could do this with foods and herbs and, you know, exercises. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Oxygen and Carbon Dioxide. Breathe deep, breathe slow. Are you tired of nagging headaches, body pains, and feeling like you've been steamrolled by 2 p.m.? Want to feel more alive with a clearer mind, voice, and skin? Yep. And not to mention getting rid of that pesky B.O. when the deodorant starts to wear off? Ew. Introducing to you today, water. Did you know that 75% of American adults are chronically dehydrated? And did you know that majority of people who are dehydrated think that they actually are hydrated? That means most people are not drinking enough water. But if they did and they realized how much of a massive difference it makes in how they feel to be hydrated, they would realize that water can change their life. So drink more water. Aim for 96 fluid ounces per day minimum for adults. Side effects include peeing more often the first couple of weeks, but don't worry, it will slow down soon. I know I should really drink less caffeine. I just wish there was some way of getting energy in the morning without a coffee. Ah, the sun. Wait a minute. I feel good. Especially when I close my eyes and stare at the sun through my eyelids. Wow, this is great. I think I'm ready to crush this day now. Thanks, son. The Sun. Use it for free with care. Hey, y'all. Hope you've enjoyed these goofy little commercials. The information is all accurate and valid, so please use the tips we shared. Uh, even though we're having fun and being silly recording them, they're still 100% meant to support you and entertain you. 
We'll be getting back to the show in just a minute, but first, I want to really encourage you to join our free community on Facebook. It's called the Powerful People Community, and it's a place where you can interact with other listeners of the show, including me, our other coaches and co-hosts and everybody. And it's a place where you can ask questions publicly or anonymously. You can request episode topics, you can share your story, and celebrate with a group of really amazing people who will also be celebrating you. So we really hope to see you in the community. We think we're building something really special because we believe when you bring together a group of powerful people, there's just so many great things we can do in this world, more than we could do on our own. So we're building a special community and we hope to talk to you there soon. Now, let's get back to the show. So then I got, I enrolled into like a health uh, program at a community college, um, got like a nutrition certificate from there, kind of fell off. That was like 2018, fell off of the, the health kick, 2018, 2019, 2020. I started doing um, life coaching. So I started to get into like the coaching environment and working with people. I was also part of a network marketing company, and that's really like relationship based uh, business. So that really got me deep into it. Spent the year traveling to go to like personal development seminars and um, work with different mentors. I uh, went to like the Tony Robbins um, seminar. Um, yeah. You know, all these Bob Proctor, may he rest in peace. It was, it was amazing. Um, so I got into that, that coaching space, um, but I was away from kind of consciously thinking about my health. But little by little, I was making little changes within myself. I was just like, okay, let me not do red meat. I took that out for a time. Let me not do chicken. I took that out for a time. And then I watched this documentary called Eating You Alive. And I was like, that's it. (laughs) No more meat, no more dairy. And also at the time, uh, my mom was sick. And that just like shocked me into like, oh, yeah, I need to be studying health so I can help people, so I can help myself, so I can help my community. Um, so that's what got me triggered into it. Um, in that same time frame, I found IIN, where we, where we uh, uh, met each other, um, just just came t- to my algorithm, I guess. I don't know what I was doing at the time, but it came on my feed. I was like, I'm right. going to do it. And since then, I've you know enrolled into other courses. I'm an herbalist. I've been studying herbalism for the past year and a half now. Um, so yeah, that's where I've come from, and here I am now, continuing continuing to be a student in this coaching field. Yeah, and you know what? I think that's going to be true for all of the coaches um, because we're always wanting to learn the next, you know, piece of research, the next, mm-hmm. you know, cutting edge, you know, information in our in our field. And okay. so, I think the best coaches continue to be long term students. Mm-hmm. I too, um, you know, yeah. IIN, which is the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. That's how mm-hmm. Coach Q and I were we were classmates together, and um, I too have continued to there's just so much, right? So you continue to take different classes and learn different things. So Mm -hmm. as a health coach, what, what is your focus? Like, is there one particular thing that you're passionate about? Um, Is there one particular area that you kind of narrow in based on, you know, you just talked about herbalist based on your past, based on your, you know, your family, you've talked about your mom, you know, and her health, Mm -hmm. you know, is there Mm -hmm. something that's kind of, captured your attention and is that the direction that you go in um yeah in a way um my main focus is to get people educated because that's how i started i started being you know helpless and unempowered by the information i didn't know um so i think it's really important to get people educated um i most recently started to work with the people in my community for about it's been about a year now um and just people just don't know people want to be yeah. healthy but people and and sometimes people do know but it just it's not brought front into their awareness like food is directly correlated with how you feel like you will be surprised and maybe you won't be surprised that people just don't yeah. <laughs> think about that at all so my main focus is to educate basic basic stuff like it what what is information so people a lot of people don't know what like fiber is and like the hell why we need it and probiotics um so this past year i've been putting on uh, like health events for my community to just 
put the information out there about the basics, um, you know, deep hydration, the type of water you're drinking, again, information, the types of vitamins and nutrients that we need. Sometimes you're deficient and that's why you may be sick or sometimes you're having too much of something and that's why you may be sick. Um, so really just information overall. And then again, most recently, I've been getting into herbalism, um, putting it out there for other people. I've been mixing herbs for a while now, but now I'm just getting like formal training and really getting um, uh, hands on training um, from yeah. a couple of mentors of mine. Um, so, yeah, information 100 percent. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what? I think that is absolutely key. I love that you said that you're you've been doing like health seminars for your community mm -hmm. wow um do you mind me asking like are are you going to to local churches are you going yeah. to you know how what what's your outreach program how are you connecting to people yeah absolutely so i'm a part of two different uh mosque or masjid that's the uh -huh. islamic you know structure of it um and i'm in the community we have our services sure. every friday um throughout the week we have like islamic studies classes um, so I have like <laughs> dove into that com uh, community and now I'm on committees of the two different um, communities. So I just put on events. So literally in those spaces, I'll have an event at this masjid and then I also have an event at that masjid because sometimes people don't, they're in different places. Sometimes these right. people don't go to their event. Um, so that's yeah. what I do. Also throughout the week when we do have our Islamic studies classes, um, I'm just doing like the best I can, whatever I can do to keep it at the forefront of their mind. So every Tuesday I cook a plant based meal for people just to just let them know that there are other great, tasty, healthier options that are, um, you know, um, in reach for them. So, yeah, that's what I've been yeah. doing so far. I love that because you're not just talking, you're actually demonstrating. If you're actually mm -hmm. making a plant-based meal, you're showing people mm -hmm. this is what you can do. And you can have mm -hmm. a plant-based meal, and I'm sure you're doing this, mm -hmm. where you have all of your macronutrients. You know, you have you have your proteins, you have your carbohydrates, you have your fats, mm -hmm. and, you know, being able to balance that. Because like you said, people don't know. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that I've been doing coaching for quite a while, and I really love the education side of it because people don't know. I think when we're in this industry and, you know, we start to do it as long, you know, as we have, we kind of take for granted that we know what fiber is. I mean, you just said, what is fiber, mm -hmm. you know, like fiber, you know, and, and, why, and why do I, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I've heard the word, maybe it's, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a health thing, but why is it so important mm -hmm. you know and so you getting that message out there i think is that's that's the key because it's not about you and what you can do for people it's about teaching them what they can do for themselves Absolutely. and i think that's what coaching is right that's mm -hmm. why we do what we do um mm -hmm. we're not the ones in the game we're the ones on the side you know mm -hmm. saying you're playing the game so i'm gonna yeah, yeah exactly so i'm gonna <laughs> jump in there and um mm -hmm and teach, you know, and educate so that you can, mm -hmm. you know, live your best life. So I'm Absolutely. really curious. I, I'm going to go back to your, um, your numb fingers and your numb mouth. So you never actually got a diagnosis. Nope. Never. No. <laughs> no. No. So just to... in, yeah. So intuitively, uh, you think it was deficiencies. That's what mm -hmm. I'm, you know, you said after, you know, searching for things to heal yourself, you said that you think it was deficiencies. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk a little bit about that. I am a nutraceuticals consultant in addition to being a health coach. Um, I've been in wellness for uh, over 20 years and deficiencies are big. I don't think people realize how deplete the standard American diet is. Mm -hmm. Um even if you're eating well-balanced meals, even if you've got spinach on your plate and omega-3 fats because you've got a great, you know, filet of salmon on your plate and, you know, you've got a high fiber, you know, lentil of some sort on your plate. Because of the way that um, our farming practices, our food industry practices, the shelf life of our food, we're not getting the nutrient dense foods that we 
used to get 100, 200 years ago. So why I loved, why I want to bring that up is because you were a dancer, a performer, you were into weight, and yet still, you know, so your body was your, what was who you are, right? You had to take care of your body, right? I mean, yep. if you're in dancing and performing and all that type of stuff, you have to take care of your body. Your body is what you do as a profession. So even mm -hmm. somebody like you, who was conscious about your body, you were in the gym doing what you were supposed to do, you still struggled. So mm -hmm. yeah, where does that leave the rest of the population, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So right. interesting. How long did yeah. you have the numbness in your hands and, you know, different things like that? How, how long did you deal with that? It was, I know it was the end of 2017 in the wintertime. Um, so I'd say that was winter, maybe say December in 2018, 2018. I moved, I'd say about six or seven months. Yeah. Sounds about right. We have months. Can you still hear me? Oh wow! Yeah, that's a long mm -hmm. time. And they, and one of the things that that you said, and this isn't about. Yes, I can hear you. Can you still hear me? Mm -hmm. It's laggy. Yeah. I've. Are we cutting out? Can you still hear me? I can still hear you. It's just oh, super it looks like lag. Our... Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the hard thing. We get on these podcasts and then the internet, <laughs> you know. Does what it wants. <laughs> oh, wow. That makes it difficult to have a conversation. Um, but one of the things that I think I want to point out about your story is, is that you went to a regular practitioner and they didn't run any tests and they didn't have any answers for you. And that's, I don't want anybody listening to feel like there isn't somebody out there that, that can't help them find answers. Cause that's what we do, right? We're facilitators for information, you know, mm -hmm. with the dissemination of information. Mm -hmm. So tell me, What's been one of the educational things that you've done within your community that you've got the most positive response from? Okay. Um, I start, so last year when I started to get into the community, I, I did my first event and it was just like an overview of like the statistics of how, you know, sick we are and the processed foods and what information is and all those, you know, facts that I went over. Um, but outside of that, um, right after that, I started a fitness class. So we do fitness every Saturday, t uh, 12 p.m same location, or we switch every now and then. And then also, um, I, st I started the cooking on Tuesdays. And then something else that's losing me right now. We go on, oh, I did a book club of this awesome book. Um, oh, right here. <laughs> um, this awesome book, The Quranic Prescription. Um, and it just tells a lot about health facts, but it relates it to our holy book, the Quran, because there's a lot of like holistic health things that our holy prophet um, has told us. And like, it's, it's, it's lining up with the science they're finding out now. So the community is more susceptible to the information when we can relate it to the Quranic scripture. So I think that's, that was like a big thing because like these are the facts, but they're also correlating it to this holy book. So you guys better listen. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that the information. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and one of the things that I love about that is that as health coaches, as integrative wellness health coaches, we talk about, you know. The multidimensional approach of, mm -hmm. you know, talking about our physical being, our mental being, our spiritual being. So the fact that you did this book club where you were tying in, you know, the spiritual belief and the community, that's mm -hmm. 
that's what we do, right? As integrated wellness coaches, we pull it all together. So that's exciting that you did that. What was the name of the book? Go ahead and say the name of the book, just in case our listeners are wanting to know. Yeah, The Quranic Prescription, Unlocking the Secrets to Optimum Health by Dr. Madia Saeed. How can, if somebody was in the Oakland, California area, how mm -hmm. can people connect with you if they want to learn more about what you do and maybe, you know, partner with you in a health journey? Do you have a Facebook page or a website? Yeah. So um, mainly my Instagram page is where I do most of my um, posting about a lot of great information and fun reels. Um, so I would say my Instagram page, which is your wellness coach Q spelled just regularly your wellness coach Q. So you can definitely connect with me there. Awesome. What's something that you enjoy most about being a health coach? Like what, what is it that you think is what drives you? Um, in the, the act of coaching other people, just learning, seeing them learn the information and being excited about it. So we've, we've talked about your background, which by the way, that was great. Um, I want to know, how do you see yourself moving forward as a coach? Do you have, like, I think the world could use a lot more health coaches. And if we could all bind together and create community and create education, but like, what's a future goal of yours? You know, we get into this profession because we care. We want to yeah. empower people. So yeah. what, what's kind of your, like, where do you see, what's, what's a hope of yours? You know, what's, what's a direction that you want to take? What, where's that you see yourself going? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one thing I can say is creating like sound, educational programs for my community to start off with um, my community where it can operate without me. I'll be there, but like yeah, recruit other health professionals in where it can operate, you know, on a day to day without, you know, someone else being missing and it like fall off. So that's, um, one of my big ones and then branching that off like having that program like be in atlanta and being here and being other um muslim communities um so that's what i've been thinking about um so yeah that's one of my goals i <laughs> think yeah, that's a great go. I love that you took a community that you already had as, mm -hmm. you know, the Muslim community, you mm -hmm. know, and part of your, you know, church community and then integrated into that. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, I, oftentimes I think we separate out, yeah. you know, health is over here and, you know, community is over there. But the fact that right. you've integrated them and that just speaks volumes to what we do as integrated wellness, pra mm -hmm. you know, practitioners mm -hmm. is it's all about the whole person. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not not just about the food on your plate. It's about who you share your time with, you know, yeah. and what you do on a day to day basis. So that's awesome that you do that. So how's the response been from your community within the Muslim, you know, mm -hmm. churches that you attend? How's that been? Uh, they love it. Um, and, you know, people are people and they're beautiful. <laughs> you know, you got to, you know, keep, <laughs> keep it has to be a consistent in your face kind of thing, but they love it. They know they need it. Um, they, yeah, they love it. They're looking for what I'm going to do next or when I'm going to do this next. And so they're really enjoying uh, what I'm bringing to them. So it puts pressure on me, good pressure on me to continue to find creative ways to bring in health. Yeah. For them. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so awesome. Have you done any like cooking classes? I know you said that you cook a meal. Yeah. But have you actually taught people how to cook a meal? It's funny you ask that. Literally last night. So last night I cook every Tuesday night. Um, after the meal, one of the sisters were telling me like, you should do a class. And I was like, I was thinking about I need to do a class because like you said, we're coaches. We we're not doing the work. We're just providing the information, the encouragement, you know, and the people have to, you know, take the baton and do it for them. So I don't want to be in the position where I'm being dependent on. So I was thinking, like, I need to do a class because 
a lot of brothers, <clears throat> there's sing a lot of single brothers in the community and they don't cook at all. So I'm just like, how are you surviving? What are you doing? <laughs> and brother, well, I don't know how to cook. And I was like, wow. And it's just like God telling me, like, you need to do a cooking class. So I have thought about it, long story short. Yeah. That's I'm in the first processes of it. Now it's a thought. It's out loud. Now what are my next steps to do it? So come yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I have done some cooking classes myself. And I think I took it for granted that I grew up cooking. Um, mm -hmm. I'm from a big, big family. And so cooking was part of our community. You know, our gatherings involved were, you know, gatherings are always around food, but I was always in the kitchen, you know, um, with usually the women. There weren't, <laughs> weren't too many men in the kitchen. And so we kind of take it for granted that we know how to do that and that it's it's a skill because it seems so second nature for some of us. So yeah. I think that's yeah. fantastic. So what's been your biggest um <laughs> What's been your biggest like aha health information thing that kind of blew you away? Do you have one or two things that really kind of stuck out as you got further and further into your health coaching journey and your education and your all your classes and stuff? Are there is there anything in particular that you're like, wow, I just wish people knew this or is it just everything that you've learned? <laughs> you know, is there is there like are there small things in particular that you think could make big steps while we're on this call? talking about you know yeah. wellness and community and things like that um it really is all the stuff like truly like wow i wish people knew how good they could feel like people don't know how sick they are until they get better and, and speaking from experience like i thought i was good but then when i did my transition into like when i did transition over to health coaching coming from life coaching, I had went plant-based vegan because I watched that documentary and it just kind of like shook me up. But when I did that, I did a full body detox and I thought I felt pretty good at the time. But then when I, after the detox, I was like, oh my God, I feel better. So I guess that is detox. That would be one. Overall, the, all the information, but detox and we really don't know how toxic we are until you get clean. And that's what just everything across the board. Um, I did a full body herbal detox with um, herbs. Um, I think you're familiar with like herbs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so it was cleaned me out. Colon, liver, kidney, parasite, candida, yeast, cleanse. And I was just like a brand new person. I had so much energy, like more energy than, you know, I was already bubbly. I was just like even more. And there's just some things that um, right. would react in my stomach that didn't react in my stomach as they did before. Like it was just so many connections. Like, wow, I was just dirty. My gut was just dirty. You know, <laughs> so detoxing. Yeah get clean before we try to pile healthy stuff on the trash we've been eating for years. So that, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. That, that's a really good point. We actually should have a podcast just on detox because I don't think people realize mm -hmm. how, I mean, our bodies are so laden with toxins, even for people that are supposedly eating the healthy foods and making the healthy choices. And it's just because of the world that we live in, you know, um, it's, it's not about pointing fingers. And I think that's a great idea. I too, I did a three month detox, um, where I, where I did, you know, a, a one month prep phase, mm -hmm. you know, prepare, opening up those detox pathways, getting those detox organs online so that when you moved into, you know, the greater detox working, you know, detoxing the body and then moving into detoxing the brain and of course the gut. And I agree with you. It's shocking how different you can feel. And we just don't realize we take in toxins just when we breathe. We take in toxins, you know, in our showers, you know, we take in toxins, you know, just through, I mean, yes, our food, but there's so many other exposures that we have today that we didn't have, you know, 150, 200 years ago. So that's a really good point. I think that's a, I think that is a podcast all by itself. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So we're coming up on about 45 minutes here and we're going to wrap up here in a little bit, but what else can we tell What else does coach Q want to share with us about who she is and what her mission is as a health coach? 
Um, that health is, it's obviously, it's not linear. You have your up moments, you have your down moments. Um, and I want to encourage people that it's okay. Um, you're not fully out the game if you're doing this. And then also being on social media, you get so many contradicting ideas, as you know, I'm just like, this is good. No, this is bad. Soy, oatmeal, all the, you know, right. <laughs> controversial topics. Yeah. And I want people to know that information will empower you and your body knows what it needs. We just have to get back into the state of getting the information and trying your best. And I just feel like God would do the rest. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love that. That connecting to source, connecting to, mm-hmm. you know, I, I love that. Um, I, I'm a huge proponent of that. Um, I have a, I, I encourage everybody to have some sort of contemplative practice, you know, yeah. where they're, where they're connecting to something greater than themselves, you yeah. know, and that's defined in so many different ways and so many different beautiful communities. And that's what I love about what we do is, is it's bio-individual. Absolutely. And it's absolutely bio individual and being able to do that. So that has been that's I, I, I love that we're even talking about this because that's what we do as integrated wellness coaches. What I think is great about you, oftentimes when you know you get the health coaching, you already had this community, which is huge, you know, in health coaching and, and the spiritual context of it, because as you well know, when we did our classes, spirituality and that path is a path to healing and a path to balancing our mm-hmm. entire well-being. So I love that. That's kind of how you started your health coaching as you went into, you know, your community that you already had um, and, you know, were able to share with them. So that's fantastic. Most people that I talk to tell me another another avenue. So you're the first person I've talked to that's like, oh, wow. You know, she started where she already was. She right. didn't, you know what I mean? That's that's like a real, that's a really big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that creates some sort of, um, there's a comfort level, you know, when you're in, you know, of surrounding that with people that you know yeah. and trust and stuff like that. So that's, that's amazing. Well, I'm super glad that you visited with me tonight. Um, I can't think of any other questions that I might, you know what, I do want, I do want to know a little bit about your special, your specialties. Um, you and I were classmates at IIN, um, mm-hmm. and you know, we have that certification, but herb, did you say herbology? Is that one of the things that you've been studying? Yeah, herbalism. Um, okay, so herbalism? Um, outside of IIN, um, I took a course online um, with this lady I met in Atlanta, and she was doing it online, so I was getting a lot of information, which was great, um, and I exhaled in that, but then I was like, I need to get hands-on, I need to know these plants, and um you know, take them in for myself and really understand them. So I enrolled into another in-person um, herbalist course. So that's, I'm currently doing that right now. Um, but I've been experimenting with herbs um, for a while now. Um, I have, I'm like building up my herb wall with all these herbs. And it's just like, you know, stuff that people just, again, information like oregano, yeah. And parsley and cilantro, the basic stuff, like those are really powerful herbs. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing for the past year or so. And it's it's amazing. It's just like, wow, these herbs, like the medicine that we have, they use the, co- the components in nature to make those medicines. And I, I, I believe people, a lot of people don't know that. So it's like, why not get the natural stuff? I mean, medicine it does this job for what it needs to do. Um, but it's also great to have the knowledge of where does it really come from? So I begin. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, and to have that type of information at your fingertips, mm-hmm. you know, to know that if I've got a little, if I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, I can sip a cup of tea of a particular herb. You know, or if I've got some digestive issues, you know, Mm -hmm. there's certain leaves I can chew on or certain spices that I can add to my food to not only taste, make it taste better, but to make it healthier. And 
you know, digest easier. So that's awesome. I, I know a little bit about herbs. I don't know a lot. So you might be one of those people that I'm calling and saying, hey, you know, what's the best herb for this or the best herb for that? That actually might be a fun podcast to do as well because I, cause I think people are hungry for the information. I really do. And um, I think we should try to take some time in our podcast to actually give some very specific information mm -hmm. to people. And herbs would be a fun one to do as well you know, as the detoxification. So mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Well, I want to thank you for spending time with us tonight and telling us a little bit about what you do. Um, we are the Holistic Health Front, and we are a group of health coaches and wellness practitioners that want to make a difference in this world. And so we thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Coach, I thank you for joining us. We apologize for the technical difficulties. Hopefully our editing team will be able to help us out with some mm -hmm. of that. But other than that, any any last words before we say goodnight? Seek knowledge and continue to be a student. Awesome. That's a great, great, great advice. All right. Well, we're going to say goodnight and until next time. Bye-bye.